Hi all, welcome back to our channel and this is going to be our first session and I hope I am audible. I am Sneha, co-founder of Karmanar Advisory and Management Services Private Limited based out of Chennai which is into uh, corporate laws, taxation, audit, bookkeeping and accounting, intellectual property for all type of entities. And here I have Mr. Fakrudin, co-founder of, sorry, founder of uh, Ledger 360 and director of Karmanar Advisory and Management Services. And I have beautiful Ms. Aprajita Surya Narayanan, our first and special guest here, about whom is um, Mr. Fakrudin is going to introduce. Yes. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, this is Fakrudin, founder of Ledger 360, as uh, Sneha had already given an intro. So let me welcome our guest, our very first guest to our very first show. Uh, something about her. So, Aprajita Surya Narayan, but we call her Aji, uh, who we like to call a wordsmith. Okay. So, she ha has a master's degree in creative writing from England. That's amazing. And is now a founder of iPhone Street Creative, a creative content company. She's also a curator at TED TEDx Napier Bridge, part of a passionate team that connects people to ideas worth spreading. She's also a, a dog parent to Loki, a Labrador, uh, and which whom you will be meeting uh, at this session if you stick to the session throughout the session. And uh, they love adventures and their long walks together. She loves anything to do with words, letters, parchment, ink, and is always thinking up stories to tell the world. You can always find her buried amidst a pile of books, which you would see uh, when she comes on screen. <laughs> Uh, when she's not reading or listening to podcasts, you can find her knocking away at her keyboard when inspiration strikes. So let us welcome our guest, Aji Aprajita Surya Narayana. Hi, hey, Aji. Hi. 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 Was, the, was the intro fine? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Claude. <laughs> How are you guys doing? How is uh, yeah, post-lockdown? You're all good. Nice. Just trying to cope up with post lockdown, of course, of course, definitely. Super. So okay, so Sneha um, and Aji, so we know uh, this is our first session. So let it, uh, let us make it more exciting. And Sneha, go ahead with uh, the first question. Like, illa nala cake no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You are okay. making this session more lively. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, so, uh, uh, Ajay, so our uh, session is going to be about the uh, creative writing space, entrepreneurship and creative writing space. And we have put together a few questions that me and Sneha will be asking you. And uh, so, yeah, uh, the first question would be, uh, I personally know you had uh, started pursuing chat accountancy, right? And uh, you had switch to creative writing all of a sudden. I would like to know and viewers would like to know your journey from almost being a CA to a full-time content writer as an entrepreneur. Yes. Okay. okay, so I've been writing since my childhood uh, and I actually did persevere quite a bit with uh, CA. I would, I would have said uh, I started for about five years. Uh, I cleared my inter, I did my articleship. I even finished my GMC, so I was that committed to finishing my CA. Oh. <laughs> but um, while studying for my final, I would have been studying for about 14, 16 hours, as you'd know. And uh, it was, I don't know, I, I just had a light bulb moment. It was an epiphany that, you know, this was probably not going to be my path for the future. And uh, okay. I, I was like, oh my God, I've studied so hard for this, so what am I going to do? But then I I did realize that that gut feeling, that intuition was very strong, that I wasn't meant to do this. In fact, I was, despite being really good at accounts, I, my favorites were consolidation and valuation. But uh, I think writing took precedence there. And uh, I worked for a year as a copywriter at a digital marketing company here at Chennai. After that, that was, again, a lot of experience there. I understood how it was to actually write not just you know my childhood writing and you know scribbling and you know scribbling notes in textbooks and beyond that how i actually learned writing was there that was my first stint with writing and then i did my masters in creative writing uh, from the university of southampton in england and i think those two years like literally just changed my life and 2018 i came back to india and i worked with another technical content company that provides focused e-learning solutions 
so and oh. then I worked worked there for about six months, and in October I decided, you know what, it's time to start something on my own, and that's how Hyphen Street was born. So we're a creative content company that aims to connect good content. So that's what the hyphen actually signifies. It aims to connect good content with great clients. So that's pretty much it. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's uh, I didn't ask, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a good uh, share, in fact. Like um, knowing to know, uh, getting to know that you had actually got your master's degree from England, then you moved back, and then there was the entire switch from CA to uh, creative writing space. That's that's a good uh, journey that you could uh, we could actually tell someone. So Thank yes, Neha. <laughs> but I have a question, like actually sure. being sure. a content writer and being a woman entrepreneur. I just want yeah. to know what are the challenges you are facing and you faced in your journey. Because well, I am being a woman entrepreneur. I want to know and learn from you a lot. <laughs> no, I mean we're all we're all in the same boat. So <laughs> well, I can I, I think, Yeah, I think um, us women entrepreneurs are now like totally ruling the world. But uh, that doesn't mean we do. I mean we we don't face our own challenges. Sometimes I feel that you know we aren't seen or heard as much as we'd be like uh, as we'd like to be, and that's kind of part of the problem. So I mean, sometimes people don't think we're strong enough, or resilient enough, or you know we, that we can't negotiate well. So these are you know the, the small things that actually sort of sort of throw you in sometimes in meetings and discussions. But I think this is now kind of changing in terms of you know the landscape, the rapidly evolving landscape that we are in in these days. And there is a lot of promise in the content space. So, but you know, if you're a creator, you get to choose how you tell your own story. So, and mine would be to say that you know, I I'm still a woman entrepreneur. I still would love to succeed and you know be out there. So that's. <laughs> And That's you know that. what? We have an interesting question here. Uh -huh. A person who is viewing this live has messaged me, and he's asking like he cleared his tenth board exam, and he wants to know how a content writing will help him as a side hustle. Apart okay. from <laughs> nice. That nice. is uh, fantastic because you know, actually speaking, the prerequisites for the content business are very simple and finite. So all you need, uh, you know, is, is a solid command of the English language. Of, you know, a curiosity to learn and explore, and basically understand how things work. Uh, you know, this is this is like a, a time upheld, beautiful, creative, classic process, and all of these are easily, easily doable, easily attainable. Uh, and as a side hustle, he could definitely start freelancing because that's a. I mean, we're uh, we're great. This is this is a gig economy, especially writing and creative uh, other creative services. So, you know, he could start freelancing and build a portfolio that could actually, you know, that that creates a certain yeah. responsibility for themselves and so teaches immense life yeah. skills. When you're in control of what you write and what you create, you just yeah. you're just in control of a lot of things in your life. So all the best to whoever is doing that. I hope you have uh, uh, made him understand what oh, hopefully. And writing for a 10th standard student would help. Hopefully, I'll be overjoyed. Okay, I, I'm to sum it up. Like, if someone is stay, uh, is in his like uh, clear to stand and in his uh, plus one or plus two, he can always uh, get into creative writing or content writing space apart from his main curriculum, right? Even the um, yeah. So, uh, my next question, since you brought up creative process, could you elaborate on that uh, on the same? Sure, I mean. Uh, creative processes are always rooted in research, especially especially in writing, because you consume content in in various forms. We read a write, we read a lot. We uh, explore different themes, genres. Uh, we watch a lot of Netflix. We watch a lot of videos. We listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, basically, we find all these nuggets of information that are everywhere. And then we try to put these together. They, we let them percolate in our head. And then at one particular time when a client asks for something, it just kind of takes a shape and form. So that would be something of you know our creative process. And all of this is fueled by uh, a lot of brainstorming amongst the team with the clients. And just, just how do you say this? 
basically <laughs> we take our time and do our benchmarking before all of this or before what you before you see what you see on the paper okay so guys you heard it straight from the entrepreneur who had started a hyphen streak and so uh, uh, getting into the creative content uh, content writing space so her takes were to research until the idea comes up and do a lot of brainstorming right yeah actually and also one more thing as huh. this in standard student has asked about this hustle side right. hustle about uh, this content writing and all those i just want to understand during this pandemic there are a lot of uh, changes that is going on in this current educational system like they are sh uh, shifting to which were they are changing their uh, syllabus bringing in a lot of uh, 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 new things that is available for the students so i just want to understand how a content writing will play a role in college or uh, in school among the students and what do you think this impact if this content writing is introduced what do you think the impact will be when they grow right i think i think that's that's a phenomenal question because uh these with with all of this technological evolution uh we don't read or write anymore especially reading we just don't read anymore it's pretty much a dying art yes i it is an art <laughs> so uh, but you know i think this is a a, a very important foundation as part of um, a child's early skills uh i feel that children must be given a few children must be given the space um, to sort of flex their storytelling muscle and you know a love room for creativity because you know this is going to be the founding principle of how they develop into an adult and uh, without this uh, even if they go into business at a later point of time it's now only creative solutions and creative strategies and creative thinking out of the box thinking which, which is really going to help them so this would be a great foundation to actually you know discover their adult self now i think I, that's what i would say i think if any school uh, teachers or any college lecturers or professionals uh, professors watch our uh, video they should be this content writing as one of their traditional syllabus <laughs> definitely at least or at least storytelling or you know uh, right basically writing in different unexplored forms it would really help i feel Okay. Yeah. So uh, this this actually makes them believe that you could make some money out of this profession also. Not only. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So this has the entire um, individual persona all together for itself. You don't have to like keep it on the side that has an hobby or an interest alone, because you can start monetizing it all. So with the world moving towards an all together another alter so this this has another opportunity for the new entrepreneurs of the new age uh, teams that are coming into the market so yeah so since we have covered the content writing now let's get to the next question the most interesting question many uh, would be interest to uh, interested to know an answer for that so yeah uh, what was your first thought as an entrepreneur when you heard about the covid lockdown covid 19 oh. lockdown in fact so oh, hashtag god. covid <laughs> oh god i think i think shock i mean i'm sure you them you would feel the same shock definitely absolutely uh, to listen from your uh, from your side that would make another <laughs> addition to the already going on uh, right. miseries out there so yeah right. go on. so actually even though we we are a cloud office so we don't really have a brick and mortar office where all of us come in and sit down and do so that even though that we are a cloud office we had our own challenges because um we i would still go out to meet clients i would still we would still need to sit down and you know strategize on campaigns on content strategy on the different kind of methods we would adopt and all of that so uh, and surprisingly this uh, first quarter i mean uh, the last quarter of last year um was that is jan to march we actually exceeded our uh, expectation we did we did pretty well on the finance front and to hear on march uh, the, on the third week of march that you know world is going into lockdown was really shocking so we'll have we had to do a lot of a lot of different budgeting and a lot of crazy finance terms throwing <laughs> thrown here and there because obviously all of this was very unprecedented and uh, we were really straddling to you know come to terms with our financial position but i think after you know a rocky couple of months i think we finally 
I think we've break we've broken the charm, we've broken the spell, and uh, we're okay. <laughs> I think we're okay. Now. <laughs> it's actually good to know that uh, you had come out of this uh, COVID lockdown bubble successfully, like after, even though you had struggles and all the hardships that you had to go through. But it's good to know as a fellow entrepreneur, I'm really happy that you are like striving good right now. Thanks. Now, since you said your business is what was already impacted, right? Mm -hmm. So let let us focus on the action plan. What was your action plan immediately when uh, when you heard about the lockdown, when you thought, okay, there is going to be some sort of a drastic change going to happen. Let me put an action plan in place. So what was your action plan? Well, I mean, it, it did take a while to actually you know, recover from all the shock. And, but that's the thing. You don't, really, you don't really have a plan in mind before you go into this because this is not a contingency. This is, this is an unprecedented global uh, disaster, so to, so to speak. Uh, a lot of marketing budgets across all of our clients' uh, budgets were cut. And, uh, you know, there was sometimes there was just no work to go around because nobody had the, uh, the infrastructure or the budget for it. So what we did, all of us, I think we pretty much reinventing the wheel. The entire world was reinventing the wheel. So we, we obviously did connect with our clients virtually, Zoom, Teams, uh, you know, even WhatsApp. So... Uh, I mean, it, it it came, it transformed into a really beautiful digital ecosystem where uh, all of our clients, all of our collaborators, our partners, everybody was there together. We would sit and see each other face to face uh, or via laptop screens, if not in, in front of each other. So it, in a way, it was like nothing had changed, but uh, we started to realize how much we craved that, you know, human contact. But... Um, on one side, mm -hmm. as marketing budgets were being uh, kind of uh, uh, undergoing a change, there were a lot of other uh, types of entities. There were startups who came and approached us uh, to talk about how their businesses were doing in the light of this um, scenario. And uh, we, were, we were crafting specific specialized social media plans to talk to uh, their audiences, their customers to say, hey, you know what we're, we're doing, uh, we're, we're maintaining social distance, we have safe handling systems. So we would love to see you guys again. Uh, and, you know, we started creating a lot of social engagement on those um, fronts as well. And I think this uh, has been our founding philosophy to actually support our clients, new, old, existing and new, uh, to kind of create the kind of content that their audience will like, that they will like. So I think one thing led to another, it kind of had a snowball effect and, you know, we're, we're okay. I think he's in mute. Yeah, mute. Unmute. <laughs> okay, no, 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 I unmuted myself. Sorry. So to sum it up, uh, you got in touch with your existing clients. You touch based with them. You tried yeah. to know what was the difficulty they were going through, and you, uh, what are all the areas that you could help in your uh, area of specialization. That is one thing. And you sort of moved to a uh, complete tech environment, right? So getting. Uh, zoom in place and google meets and getting uh, like going uh having virtual meets that is one thing and sec second thing you all together uh, exist like what was your existing cost structure you um uh, moderated like you made a complete change in it so that's what i understand so uh yeah pretty much so uh, by what i meant was i mean obviously there was a lot a lot of operational cost at this moment it's just that we had to pay our salaries, which we would, which we definitely would, did. But um, other than that, actually, it saved a lot of costs because trans we didn't have any any transportation cost at all. So there was uh, there was no no uh, business lunches, nothing. So, so we did yeah. save quite a bit. So if you want to cut corners, I think you should go on lockdown. <laughs> Okay, since me and Sneha are into the space where we help other startups with compliance as bookkeeping and accounting, uh, just uh, in two, uh, like uh, your two cents, where this sort of a, like uh, how did accounting, finance, or uh, planning a budget really help you when there was a crisis like this? I think a lot, and I, I personally am, I, I am a planner. I cannot uh, do, I, I cannot execute without planning. So, to me, it's it was very healthy for me to actually sit down and assess 
where you know money was leaking what kind of uh, you know what kind of remedial action should i have taken uh, and that way i started yeah. rethinking my entire um, cost structure as well so Amazing. what yeah so and that really helped because she you and i had conversations earlier on the on a similar topic and i really took a lot of your advice and uh, try to implement it <laughs> and try to implement it. and that's probably why we have, we've been able to kind of uh you know cross this i mean so to speak not entirely cross but we're halfway there so i think okay. thanks to you thank you thank you so yes neha yes see i want to know what was your game plan when the okay. lockdown was there to uh, that help your business to survive and did you right. reframe your strategies and i just want to know about all those yeah so uh, as i said we had uh, a lot of we did have a lot of technological dependence we still do uh, so that and then um, uh, we i'm i mean a lot of my friends are actually women entrepreneurs women entrepreneurs and uh, there's this uh, we had this beautiful ecosystem where you know we have uh, weekly calls uh, we would also talk um, my writers and i our partners all of us would talk on a regular basis to kind of it was like a wellness check in call to understand how each other um, is doing what we can to do to support each other these are things that you know you don't think of as part of your everyday uh, you know routine office life so you when you're forced into a lockdown you your mind races and obviously when your mind races others does others do as well so uh, i think taking the time out to actually uh, talk to people in business in your personal life actually really helped me it helped me reconnect to a lot of uh, friends clients i was able to reach out uh, to a lot of my clients and build relationships with them uh and if uh, we did have uh you know we hadn't spoken for a while i would definitely go ahead and talk to them so i so think I that think way we would we, i i've reinvented myself is what i would i would say because uh these are things i wouldn't normally do because nobody has the time for it so but uh thankfully uh, something a lockdown like this has helped me get in touch with a lot of people like minded people who you know have helped build the ecosystem that's a wonderful thing like calling up uh, having a weekly meeting with your uh, team and checking up their mental love uh, it's an absolute thing because pakru then very well knows about me <laughs> bragging about things and just nagging him completely almost every day with some half an hour and then a perfect healthy so <laughs> and i want to know one more thing what kept you sane uh, like you personally or professionally during this lockdown because i completely lost <laughs> during this lockdown we all did <laughs> i'm sure it's just not us it's the entire world that lost it i mean i'm sure i'm sure but i think uh, uh, we we we've been very lucky because uh, we have our dog loki and uh, he's been he's been the happiest during this lockdown because all of us are at home all the time and uh, it's been really fun he he actually has sat on a couple of my zoom meetings as well so <laughs> i'm going to bring him out oh yeah yes once <laughs> once yeah. again we'll ask him to just say hi <laughs> definitely yeah, that's a, that's uh, that's a bonus for the viewers out here right now <laughs> so uh, yeah loki has been a great source of joy uh, for all of us uh, my uh, parents and i we've all been working in and around so we keep bumping into each other and loki bumps into all of us and then comes in you know decides which room he wants which meeting he wants to crash and uh, he just does it and um, it's been fun uh, been reconnecting with uh, my family as well uh, we've actually never you know in, in, after so many years we actually sat down to have fantastic family lunches and uh, that really that really brought us closer and uh, i love i enjoy cooking so i spend a lot of time in the kitchen baking uh, bake that big coffee birthday cakes i know i know i, I know the days where i was stumped with the vegetable biryanis that i used to <laughs> and then the sensational dalgona coffee did you try Absolutely. that 
sorry no no i didn't try it and get into the dogo na craze at all she 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 definitely got into the biryani craze actually yeah yeah definitely we have every oh. sunday we have, every sunday we have uh, vegetable oh, biryani yeah. <laughs> yeah, was Neha, was Neha is a hardcore biryani lover. Nice. I'm a hardcore biryani lover. But I, if I say veg biryani, I think you'd probably say that's not, that's just pulao or something. Uh, I, I used to get offended before, but now, yeah, <laughs> biryani is biryani. <laughs> right. So actually, I also listen to a lot of um, podcasts. Uh, podcasts really help me because uh, even while I work or, uh, you know, while I'm cooking, it's nice to listen to a podcast, which are just basically knowledge gateways. you just you know there's just so much to listen about the world it's just it's not even watching it's just listening and it, i noticed yeah. that you know my listening comprehension actually improved after which was really good because i was i was i I'm, i'm a talker i am not a great listener but i think after that it really changed and uh, uh i should also say i to keep myself sane of course sanity is a state of mind uh i think meditation really helps so there are these couple of apps that i have on my phone that really help and uh, yeah i think that pretty much sums it up <laughs> i think i'm sane now but we i did have my periods my bouts of insanity so yeah that's that's amazing because every time when i uh, uh, say something to uh, fakrud and he will be like please do this please do that and he is trying to push me to do this meditation i think maybe after listening to you i will try doing it okay. i'll send <laughs> I'll, i'll send you the apps i'll send you the names of the apps <laughs> yes fakrud and you're on mute <laughs> He is making this uh, more lively. <laughs> <laughs> Now the reason is there are a lot of background noise going on, so I thought I'll mute so that you can no. talk peacefully. So yeah, uh, that that was amazing. Like you had uh, taken help of few apps out there. Loki was a good uh, companion during, the, and you also got to know your family well. In fact, like me personally, I visit them very less. But now since lockdown, I'm here. Like it's like wherever. um whatever decision i have to take or every morning i have to have a chat with them so that's really good so that sort of thing brings a bond a sort of a happy space yeah. in your head definitely and yeah so after this like post lockdown now that the lockdown is resuming and it's almost resume uh what is your comeback plan to come back the post lockdown world out there so like in your words yeah. is the apocalyptic world that we are living in almost It's very dystopian very dystopian i yeah. think actually very dystopian yeah. so that sort of feel that we are giving uh, we are getting right so you have any com- a comeback plan in uh, that you have already implemented if you have okay. already implemented please let us know everyone would like to <laughs> no actually the, as i said uh, we're already on you know we're already post lockdown and a lot of businesses are open but uh, in and out we I, i i mentioned that you know we are a cloud office we don't really you know come down to one place and sit and collaborate and mari we've always done it uh, you know we would sporadically meet would occasionally meet but you know a lot of it happens online but uh, one thing i really missed was uh, for a couple of months i was at a co-working space and uh, that energy was just phenomenal because there was so many self starters and entrepreneurs and freelancers mm-hmm. so many people all under one roof we'd all like grab coffee together we would you know have like long lengthy conversations on you know why the economy is going <laughs> where the economy is going <laughs> and uh, and a lot of, we had a lot of shared passions and interests as well so uh, that is something i really miss and uh, if i could uh, i mean hope hopefully once all of this does uh, settle down and you know it's safe for us to go out and i would really love to get back to that but uh combating post lockdown is uh we pretty much segued into the post lockdown so to me there is uh, now there is no reinventing the wheel we've already finished that we've already crossed that uh bridge so it's just sticking to whatever plan we've actually had and you know be flexible and keep rolling i mean just playing it by the year i think that's what's really helped i know this com- coming from a planner that from from an obsessive planner this is very different but we all learned that you know unprecedented things happen all the time so i think <laughs> i think just just go with the flow i think works best 
great great so uh, that is one thing and second thing now um, and now the since everyone has moved uh, has started to work remotely and started right. to use the technology mm -hmm. a lot and a social media strategy has become the thing right now so everyone has yeah. experimented and was experimenting during the lockdown phase how was that has that helped your business and uh, have you like uh, seen a sudden uh, change in your business yes. revenue going in or sort of customers that uh, you are like new sort of uh, uh, customers that you haven't seen when you uh, started iPhone Street but altogether post lockdown has that uh, been an experience for you? I think definitely because a lot of uh, conventional traditional platforms and clients who've had only brick and mortar offices have started to move digital because obviously you know you need to survive you need to thrive so um and this has changed this has rapidly changed from the time you know we first started hyphen street and that was in 2018 which is not too long ago it was just about i mean october I and mean, next month we'd be two years old so it's uh it's just mind-boggling to see how many industries how many verticals even have actually transformed into a very digital friendly landscape and uh, it has definitely changed the way we do business because now you you get to do you get to shop on Instagram. Uh, you know people don't even shop on websites anymore. They just go to Instagram. <laughs> we we have an Instagram shopper over here. <laughs> so obviously uh, the engagement style, the 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 kind of content you put there put out there, um, the kind of response you give to people, everything has to be curated. Everything has to be uh, not doctored but as authentic as possible. So that authenticity comes from, you know, understanding that brand's tonality and, you know, their journey, essentially. So uh, traditional brands switching to a very digital landscape has actually changed the way they've done business. They've been doing business for all of these years and now, and they've actually seen an increase in uh, their uh, revenue and stuff like that, despite, despite the current scenario. So if you could do the math, I think that would definitely work in their favor. So, so I think yeah. So, so what you meant to say was like uh, it, it's it doesn't matter what size of the business you are. You need an online presence. You yeah. need to post some amount of content either on Instagram, Facebook, or you need to have some sort of personal branding to be done on YouTube. If you have to, uh, if you are looking for a future there, so that's the yeah. future, right? So yeah. and talking about the future, um, there is a word that's taking the world by storm gig economy so gig economy has always been there but now since uh, post lockdown everyone you know there is an entire transition that's happened it's taking the world by storm so everyone has started to get into this sort of an economy so throw some light on it okay so uh, writing and all other creative pursuits have always been gigs and uh, it's it's nice to know that the world is following our suit now uh, you know, in, in a sense, uh, it kind of it kind of makes a lot of sense because in a gig economy, you're not uh, you're actually liberated by not being tied down by cost and you know spending enormous amount of time and energy and um, you know substantial cost in terms of training and all of that. And everybody has their own working pace. So uh, by by recognizing this potential this untapped potential of the gig economy, I think we could all be, you know, entrepreneurs in our own light. And that's just phenomenal. I mean, don't you think it's just fascinating that, you know, at, at, at some point in time that all of us could be entrepreneurs and all of us could be self-starters and, you know, have a piece of us there. And I think that that's something beautiful. And this gig economy, I think, is just is, is here to stay. So that's okay. what I think. That's true. I would truly agree with you because um, me personally, I've always believed in the gig economy or right. a, a, a prospect to where you take an assignment and rather than not keeping someone on a payroll, you use their services. Exactly. This also is a great cost effective measure. Apart from that, people actually are not stuck to one particular stream, uh, line of work. Right. They get to see people, uh, clients from different verticals and also right. the, their uh, earnings also mm -hmm. goes up because it's not fixed to one particular standard scale per month, right? So yeah, uh, Snea, over to you now. <laughs> I think I am giving you the uh, honors to 
கொஞ்சம் So everyone out there, Ajay is not a camera person, but I behind know. camera, she talks a lot. <laughs> and uh, Kapoor, I have to tell that Kapoor is an ally Sheen. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, I keep calling you Sheen. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, as an entrepreneur into creative space, right? So what would be your advice to the fellow business owner? Your two cents to the people who are looking... for entrepreneurship and content writing space or creative writing or take up yeah. writing and do we see a good amount of opportunity out there and uh, so what would be your piece of advice here uh okay so this is this is going to be like a two part question <laughs> two part answer so um actually i let me let me tell you a bit of my journey as to how you know our company came about before i get into you know giving my two cents <laughs> um when i when uh, in october 2018 when i wanted to start my business i really wasn't sure uh, if i wanted to be a sole proprietor because um sole proprietors are generally freelancers and i from my personal experience i've actually found that um freelancers don't uh, are not unfortunately not taken as seriously as startups as in like private limited companies or llps are uh so i felt i needed some kind of legal backing to show that i was very serious about my business and uh, i got to talking to a friend who had uh, you know a lot of experience with marketing and he and people management so uh, with his expertise in marketing and my you know capability with <laughs> in writing we decided to kind of we went back and forth uh in terms of llp or private limited and finally we decided to go for a private limited company because we wanted to be able to give quality content to people who wanted to take that to their uh businesses and audiences uh but that's where you know uh we it it was not obviously this is not an easy uh challenge at all we i mean this this is not something that's very easy to do at all it's definitely a challenge because um anybody who's been in this content industry will know how rapidly the landscape is transforming as i said it is nothing like it was in 2018 and we are constantly learning and relearning unlearning relearning a lot of things a lot of tools uh, a lot of social media tools that we've always wanted to adapt uh, algorithms keep changing so uh, if you want, i mean if you want to enter the content writing business i think besides passion and uh, commitment i think it's patience and perseverance that really matters in this field while constantly trying to stay up, uh, updated with the with the trends not just trends in terms of social media but trends in terms of understanding how the world is moving the i mean everything is but is a butterfly effect these days so if you have if there is some kind of uh, you know if if, there, if we have an inclusion problem somewhere in a remote state in the in, uh, in a remote town in the us that is going to affect the kind of content we talk about in chennai for a for a brand who talks about fashion that is going to be a game changer so th- these are things that you know we should people should be wary about to kind of have that conscious understanding that you know this is going to change the way we do this and i think that is what you know the content industry needs to evolve into so that would be my advice <laughs> that's amazing like amazing that's wonderful <laughs> that was just not a two cent that was actually more than two cents that you gave <laughs> i just hope it's amazing <laughs> no harm in that so yeah so for those of you who have been wondering uh, we are not streaming on youtube right now because we had some technical glitch but this video will drop in at youtube very soon the moment we finish our live so uh so yeah i think uh, we have covered almost uh, everything that we need to ask so sneha have we left with anything 
uh, I had a lot of key takeaways from Ajit, to be very frank. I was in an uh, impression that uh, business who are uh, having an uh, office space have been hit badly and uh, they are restructuring and all those. But after uh, your uh, answers, I, can, I am able to understand that even people who are actually working virtually, even before pre-COVID, had to do some reformations in the year working systems and all those things. I just have, I have only one question, which is just then after COVID was uh, 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 told to the people and uh, it was everywhere uh, where the companies were uh, laying the employees, laying out the employees. I just wanted to know whether your entity uh, had some kind of uh, layoff or <laughs> any uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> had actually. Also, curiosity, I just want to no, know. No, no, that's, that's perfectly, uh, thank you for asking that because with us, it was exactly the opposite. We actually hired people during this time because um, I gotten to know that some uh, uh, one of our freelancers, um, you know, she had a very difficult situation with her job. So um, we tried. I mean, obviously, I couldn't match her pay, but uh, I did offer, and uh, she's still with us. She's one of our finest writers, and uh, I think I think that is uh, that is something we, because, we did. Uh, the one thing as myself and Fakruding are working together, we always have this argument. He is always on the side that he wants to hire someone. I am like, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the buying side and I'm on the buying side. <laughs> I'm like, no, our financial position doesn't allow. It's like only if you appoint someone, your financial position will go up. <laughs> like, oh, please, wait for some time. Don't give me heart attack <laughs> by saying this. So that's the I understand. What you are actually did. I understand. And a lot of uh, good things which I took was like uh, I tried uh, engaging myself in a lot of activities like painting or reading books or listening to but but that didn't really help me during this okay. lockdown sitting inside four walls just <laughs> did, you, did you say it didn't help you or did it help you <laughs> did. no it didn't help uh, it didn't oh, help me yeah. <laughs> 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 I think as you were telling, no, after this call, he will tell me, now nah, meditation is <laughs> not <laughs> come to me. If someone else comes and tells you, you will say yes. That, that is after you actually implemented. <laughs> <laughs> so, awesome. there are so many good things in your uh, answers, which actually help from a student or a school or college going student to uh, them and a business entrepreneur or woman entrepreneur who is the just still having the confusion of how to uh, sorry to <laughs> hey oh, <okay. laughs> you just have to introduce <laughs> no it's fine, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's so, no no he's just it's fine <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so the Loki wouldn't make his appearance today, right? <laughs> no, he, he, that was just a cameo, uh, uh, and I think that's. Good. <laughs> okay. so what, how was your experience, Pakistan? On you, my you experience on the whole. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You know her before, but still, I just wanted to uh, have few words on about this live session and the day she answered your key takeaways. Okay. So it's like, I know Aji like for a couple of months now, she, she has done some work for her, her, us as well. My very, very first con conversation with her was uh, for something. <laughs> uh, so I, I think Aji remembers that. So uh, we broke the ice on our very first conversation. It was as if like I wasn't talking to a stranger, but it, she's a good conversation starter. That is one thing. And second space is like, Coming, getting to know that her, uh, the company that she runs and the way she runs it had actually inspired me. And right now, from the couple of questions that I have always wanted to ask and which I asked right now, it's quite inspiring. Her journey has been uh, like truly worth sharing. That is one thing. And to sum it up, uh, it, you don't need to have huge amount of investments to start a company that you are in. It's, it, it's more than enough. Since you said you work from a cloud office, so there you save your rental space and second like uh, you you appoint that there is again you take people and freelancers to get your assignments you know you work on clients on individual basis so eventually anyone can do it all they have to uh, work on how are they going to execute uh, the their uh, plan and how, what are all the customers that they can target right so that's uh, one way to look at it 
So anything else that you would like to add, uh, Ajay? No, I think you uh, <laughs> you've given me way too many compliments. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> but I I agree. I agree with this, uh, what you're saying, um, Shane. It's it has radically transformed the way we've uh, done business. Amazing, so. amazing. So since you are a bookworm and uh, you have always read <laughs> a lot of books, so what is your book, uh, the book that you are reading right now that you would like to? Okay. Like, uh, Okay, so there's this. Uh, I read a lot of nonfiction these days. Um, so there's this beautiful book I'm reading called uh, A Field Guide to Getting Lost by Rebecca Solnit. Um, it's a fantastic book about nostalgia, memories, and uh, how we tend to associate certain places, certain smells with um, certain feelings of melancholy and stuff like that. It's a beautiful book. Uh, if you're really into the nonfiction genre, I think you'll really love it. Uh, yeah. So, that's it. That's it. so yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, have you question? Uh, so that you uh, we need to ask. Uh, I think we are done, right? I'm completely clear now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. That was fun. Uh, I'm sure in the call, Murjorne, she'll go to some corner and she'll be like taking a good amount of breath. <laughs> so. Uh, on a serious note, thank you, Ajit, for coming on and being a first guest. It was a great conversation. Like, in fact, we didn't feel like we are on a live session. It was just we are meeting somewhere in a coffee shop or in, uh, in our office and uh, having a good conversation out there. I think Sneha would have uh, felt the same. So, yeah, guys. So, very you particular in choosing. Uh, we were just breaking our head because we always have this uh, thing like we have to bring people who bring the neighborhood feeling. Like we had a lot of interactive uh, things and a lot of so kuti kuti so here and there. <laughs> we wanted people who can take every uh, thing in a lighter way when they are coming for a session and everything. Where we were just literally breaking a right of whom to call and all those, and you were suddenly like, okay, let me talk to Aji. And I'm so glad. I'm really honored to be oh, here. So we so are thankful to you for being our first guest. Absolutely first a pleasure. Session. Absolutely a pleasure. <laughs> And guys, do comment any suggestions that you have. And uh, we are always open to suggestions as we are new into this uh, sort of a stream and we are exploring a new thing over here. And you would like to, uh, whom would you like to see next also would be good. So all your recommendations and suggestions, you can just drop in our, at the message box right now or, or at our page. And uh, we will be soon posting this video on YouTube. You can check uh, the same uh, video over there too. So yeah, okay. so it's time to end it, and yeah, yeah, until next time, we'll be posting for more updates. So stay tuned. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. 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 Bye.